Hi, today I wanted to show you a new stove I just got. This is the compact wood-burning stove from Jim Falk at trailgear.org. And I'm really impressed with the design of this stove. So today I just wanted to show you a few of the features that I like and also tell, tell you where you can get one or find instructions on how to build one. Okay, the reason this is called a compact wood-burning stove is because it actually comes in two pieces. Uh, the top part nests inside of the bottom part. And to set up the stove, all you do is turn it upside down, slide out the top part, flip the stove over, put it on the ground, and then snap it into place. You'll want to align the bottom of the V with the seam in the bottom can. And you pull these little clips up on top that act as pot supports and also aid in ventilation. Then you're ready to go. Okay, so it's pretty windy out here today, so what I've decided to do is to put my stove in this little stone alcove just to give it a little bit of protection. You should always use uh, your wood stoves, any kind of wood stove, in a protected area. You don't necessarily need a windscreen per se, but it definitely helps to keep it enclosed a little bit. Um, so one of the things I really like about this stove is how easy it is to light. So I'm going to show that to you now. Um, you'll want to start with some kind of kindling in the bottom that you're going to light through one of these exhaust holes. and then. Today, I'm using some dryer lint uh, as my tinder. You could use a variety of different types of materials to start the stove. Uh, I just happened to bring this because I did laundry last night. So you're going to put it in the bottom of the stove and make sure that it's close, close to the holes in the bottom so that you can uh, put your match in there and light it very easily. Next, you're just going to fill it with uh, small twigs, which you're going to feed through the top. This will get the stove going and then you'll feed it later with larger pieces to get the, f the fire going. Okay, so I don't know if you can see in there very well or not, but I've got the stove filled with twigs and ready to light. Okay, now to light the stove, I'm just going to take a match and light one of the bottom vent holes. Now remember I had my tinder touching the vent holes, so that's why that lit so easily. It's just going to get really hot really fast and I'm going to let the smaller stuff burn first and then later I'm going to start feeding bigger pieces through this fuel port right here. That's what that V is for. There's going to be a lot of smoke at first but once the stove gets going that'll go out pretty quickly. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put my pot on now. This is an anti-gravity gear two-cup pot. I've got two cups of water in there. So I'll just place that on the pot stands. Put the lid on. And again, while that's boiling, or uh, while it's coming to a boil, I'm just going to keep feeding slightly larger pieces of wood in through the fuel port, just to keep it going. You can see the smoke stay down a lot. It comes and goes. I'm using a kind of mixture of different woods here, so. Some are a little bit smokier than others. Okay, so let's check on our boil here. It's been about seven minutes, and you can see I've got a nice rolling boil. I think the wind really helped me out today, actually, because it uh, made that stove really nice and hot. I didn't have to stoke it or anything like that. Just kind of lit it and went, and seven minutes later, I had a nice boil. One thing people complain about with wood-burning stoves is having to go around and gather all the wood for fuel. They see it as kind of a chore. Actually, I found it kind of enjoyable. It was fun to gather all the wood, and then while the stove is going, feeding it through the fuel port here kind of gives me something to do while I'm waiting for my meal, and it seems like mealtime's coming faster. So I think it takes away a little bit of the uh, anxiety of waiting for water to boil and the watched pot never boil syndrome. So, plus, it just smells really cool. Okay, so the stove's pretty much out. I've still got some coals burning here. Uh, but I really don't want to sit around and wait for them to go out. I just want to give you an idea of how efficient this stove is. So I'm going to take the stove out, and that's all the ashes it produced. And that's not even burned down all the way yet. I just wanted to give you an idea of the amount of uh, ash that's left over to show you how efficient it really is. It didn't take me that much wood um, to do this video. And I probably used a lot more than I normally would just because I let it go for a while while I was filming and things like that. So... Um, doesn't take a lot of wood to get, to get uh, your water boiling with this one. So, before you leave, you always want to make sure that you've exting extinguished everything. So I'm just going to douse that pretty good. Okay, when you're ready to pack up, you're just going to dismantle the stove by unsnapping the two pieces. 
Again, flipping the stove upside down and then putting the top part inside the bottom part. And now he's got a very compact 6.5 ounce wood stove that runs on unlimited fuel. Okay, so you've just seen the compact wood burning stove in action. However, there are two other really clever features that Jim built into the design of this stove that I wanted to show you. Uh, one is that the top section, once you remove it, it can be used as a windscreen for an alcohol stove. A lot of people who use wood-burning stoves carry a backup alcohol stove, just in case. Uh, or you might have other people in your group that are using an alcohol stove, and you could use this as a windscreen if you wanted, just to carry one less piece of gear. So it's actually pretty neat the way he designed this. There are four small holes in the side, and what you can do is put a tent stake through them like this. And then, this is just the bottom of the can, you drop that in there, and you've got a little platform now, and you can put your alcohol stove in there, and you've got a windscreen. Basically, you just turn this around so that this part doesn't face the wind. Uh, really, really neat idea. I'm not sure if I'd use this or not. I'd probably just bring the wood-burning stove as it is, but it's nice to know that you have this as a backup. Another thing you can do is use the bottom part of the stove as what Jim calls a food warmer. So basically this is just to keep your food warm if you're doing something else, or if one meal's ready and the other isn't, you just want to keep it warm. Uh, it's really easy. You just put some coals in the bottom from your campfire and uh, put your pot on top and that'll just keep your food nice and warm while you're uh, waiting for whatever it else it is you're doing. Things I like about this stove. For one, at six and a half ounces, it's one of the lightest wood-burning stoves available. If you look at some designs, DIY or commercial, some of them can weigh up to one or two pounds, and to me that's just totally unacceptable. There are some commercially available wood-burning stoves that rival the weight of this one. However, they can run up to $140. And I'm certainly not going to pay that when I can easily build one myself or buy one for just a fraction of the cost. So it's also very economical. And when you consider the fact that you don't have to carry any fuel with this, it's just six and a half ounces, and you have an unlimited supply of fuel, um, the weight savings is, even, uh, is magnified even more. I'm also very impressed by this really clever two-piece design where the top nests inside the bottom. One of the reasons in the past I've been reluctant to use wood-burning stove is because most of the designs are just so big and bulky and they just take up way too much space in your pack. So I really like the idea that I can nest this inside of here and then put this inside a pot and it's very compact and doesn't take up a lot of space in my, my pack. So also, um, I find this stove to be very hot and efficient. I always kind of had this idea of wood-burning stoves being uh, very slow and kind of taking a long time. But actually today I got a seven minute boil time, which I was very impressed with. Normally uh, many of my open burner alcohol stoves take 11 or 12 minutes to boil two cups. Today I got seven minutes, so uh, it was a lot hotter and faster than I expected. And as you saw, it doesn't really require a lot of wood. Um, I was actually pretty shocked at how little wood that it actually re uh, required. So I gathered a lot more than I needed and ended up with a kind of surplus. So that just means that you're going to spend less time uh, scrounging around camp looking for fuel. If you've ever thought about trying a wood-burning stove but were reluctant because maybe you thought your fire building skills weren't good enough or wood-burning stoves just don't work, I would uh, urge you to consider trying this one. Um, I don't have any background or expertise in using wood-burning stoves and I was able to get this one going on the first try with very good results. So this would definitely be a good stove to start off with. I've, I have tried a few other designs and wasn't really impressed. Uh, at all with them. So uh, this one's won me over though. So I'd say give it a shot. Uh, build your own. Jim has instructions on his website of how you, how you can make one yourself. Uh, if you don't want to make one yourself or you just don't have the tools, then you can also buy one on the website for a minimal investment. It's totally worth it in my opinion and definitely a really cool toy to play with. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope this has given you uh, some inspiration for uh, trying one of these wood-burning stoves.